Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's December the 4th and we're looking at the third chapter of John's first epistle. And my password is in verse 2. He says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So what John is saying is this, is that we do not know, we do not know what it's going to be like when we are glorified. We do not know what our bodies will look like when we're raptured. We do not know what life will be like beyond the glorification of the saints. We can only imagine. We know that we will have a body, a real body. We know that there will be eating and drinking. But there's an awful lot more questions that we might have. And John simply says, we do not know. Uh, what we will be like but we do know this that when Christ appears that we will be like him and we will see him as he is the Lord Jesus will stand before us in his glorified state he will no doubt be all dazzling and white and he will call us to himself and we'll kneel at his feet and we'll kiss him and he will welcome us home. Now those that have a hope like this, they live a totally different type of life. They don't live a life of desolate sin. They don't live a life of wantonness and of drunkenness and of revelings. No. The people that have a hope like this find that it transforms their heart and their mind and their life and they live a holy life. Later on, uh, John says um, things like, He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Now, uh, immediately the legalists will jump on this and say, There you are, see, got to keep the Ten Commandments. No, no, we're way beyond the Ten Commandments. We're way beyond the Old Covenant here. We're talking here about the Christian living a life that's pleasing in Christ. In fact, in the previous verse, he tells us what the commandment is. He says, and this is the commandment, that we should believe in the name of the Son of God and love one another. So these are the commandments, and these are the things that Christ has left us to do. Now, a passage like this is not easy. John still in spite of speaking to Christians, he still has a very strong Jewish flavour. John was a Christian and he ministers amongst Jewish Christians who still re maintain their Jewish identity in spite of the fact that they're Christians. There's nothing wrong with that. Paul did that and John did that and many others did that. But they were Christians but they still nevertheless still thought and acted in the terms of being Jewish. And so um, we know that they're Christians because in verse um, 13 he says, Marvel not, brethren, if the world hate you. And we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. In fact, throughout the whole of this passage, he gives lots of ways whereby we can know that we're saved. We know that we're saved if we live righteously. We know that we're saved if we abide in Christ. We know that we're saved if the world hates us. We know that we're saved if we live righteously before the Lord our God. These are all the evidences of the fact that we have been truly born again. And so let's remember this, that Christ is coming soon. One day it'll all be over. We'll be in his presence. We will see him face to face. We will look into the eyes of the one 
who died upon the cross and who rose again that we might be declared righteous before him. So God bless you, have a wonderful day and may we all live in the light of the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Bye for now.